Hi, this is Matilda Potter, and today I would like to show you all how I make a berry bowl, uh, which is basically taking a perfectly nice bowl and poking a bunch of holes in it. First, I wait until it's about leather hard. That means that I could rub my fingers over the bottom and it feels like rubbing your fingers over a leather belt or something. It's not sticky at all. I take just a little bit of water and put it around the lip and that helps it act like, act like a suction cup. Put it down on my wheel and I have cheated by writing a bunch of concentric circles on my wheel so I have a little bit of a guide for where I'm gonna place it. And if you wanna make sure that the part that you're trimming is centered, the best way to do that, if you're still at the point where you're not really throwing very centered yet, is to put it on the wheel, get it going, and put your needle tool to it like this. What you'll notice is if it has any spots that are a little bit too far out, you'll get the line. And I notice the line doesn't show up over here, which means I need to move it a little bit in the direction where there's no line. Once I have it centered, if I put a needle tool on it, it'll go pretty much all the way around and give me a defined line. All right. Now, before I start going really fast, because if I go really fast, it's just gonna go flying, which is kind of fun, but doesn't really result in the best berry bowls. We take good clay. This means you don't want it to be super hard and you don't want it super soft. If it's too soft, it's not gonna hold. If it's too hard, it's gonna damage your pot and it won't be sticky, so it won't hold. Basically, if you cheat on this step, pots go flying. I hold it really firmly down so it's not gonna move. And I just push those lugs in. I use three of them. And I do not have to spend a whole bunch of time on smoothing these lugs down because that doesn't add any support or strength. All it does is it makes it harder to peel up. Uh, make sure that the lugs you use are a good size for the pot. If you were going to try to use little skinny ones like this, that would be fine if you were trimming a tiny little teacup. But bigger bowls need bigger support. All right, so here's my last lug. When I press them in, I'm not pressing straight in towards the pot. I'm not pressing straight down towards the ground. I'm pressing at a 45 degree angle. All right, so now it's not gonna go anywhere. I get it going pretty fast. This part's counterintuitive. It feels like if you're going slowly, you'd have better control, but it's the opposite. It's like riding a bicycle. If you try to go really slowly, you feel every little bump. When you're going faster, you can sort of shave over, glide over the rough parts. And I'm gonna take my trimming tool, and I'm actually gonna trim the whole thing, starting with that ridge of what I call the baby fat where it was adhered to the wheel. I take that entirely off first. Then, you see how it's still got like a flat spot and a gouge, and it, it just doesn't look uniform? Then I'm going to more carefully just run that tool over the surface several times. Getting rid of all that excess clay and also making a really nice surface. I like to final up just by running my fingers over it because what that does is it gets rid of some of the tooling marks and it makes it a nicer surface. Now, you can see how easily I can take these lugs off. So that kind of smooth trimmed bottom, you would want to do it on something like a hanging planter as well. Actually, that would pretty much be the same 
method of making. I would make a shape like this and I would just put some holes in the top and it would be a nice hanging planter. But this is going to be a berry bowl. What that means is I got a bunch of, bunch of holes in it. I use this guy. Because I don't want to ruin the spiral in the center, I'm going to do kind of a random groupings of threes. time I'm taking those little chunks out. There we go. Holes. Make sure that it gets all the way out of the holes that you're poking. Keep in mind what you're going to serve in these berry bowls too, because I might want smaller holes if this is going to be for blueberries. And if it's going to be something like a strawberry bowl where the fruit is pretty big, you can make the holes larger. You can even do, you can even do them in patterns, like you can take miniature cookie cutters that have a star shape or something like that. And use that for your hole puncher and have some cool decorative stuff going on. Now you notice it's a little ragged where those holes are. I am not going to try to smooth them now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until it's totally bone dry. Then I'm going to go outside because you don't want to breathe the dust. And I'm going to use a scotch bright pad just like this when it's bone dry and I'll gently sand it and it'll be a lot smoother and it's a lot faster. Now, good question for this one is, well geez, if it's a bowl, how is it going to sit? I'm going to add three little feet to it. Little hand built feet. And you can do thrown feet as well. I just think it looks kind of cute and whimsical when you do the little handmade feet. So I'm gonna score nice and deep. We don't want our feet to fall off. See how it's really jagged? That's good. Then I take a little bit of slip. No, it is not chocolate gelato. It's just watery clay. And you don't need very much at all. Just a little smidge. If you use too much, it'll all ooze out like slime. Then I just take a couple, well, three little balls of clay, and I want these to be about the size of blueberries. And it's easier to get the sizes more similar, more consistent, if you make a few of them and put them all next to each other and that way you can see that one of them was way too small and luckily it was the one that I dropped that was way too small so I get rid of the, get rid of the one that's way too small and then I make another one that one's way too big pinch off a little bit Now the trick to having pretty little rounded feet on an object like this is that I'm not going to apply them when they're still little totally round blueberries. What I'm gonna do is first throw them down on the wheel head 
so they get a little bit of a flat spot. That flat spot's gonna give me a really good sticking point, good adhesion. So I score the flat spot really well. See how jagged that is? And gently wiggle that right on to my waiting spot on the pot that I already prepared. There we go. I find that when you do three feet, it's easier to get it to sit level than when you try to do four. Not sure where why that is, but I can shape them a little bit. I mean, I kind of pinch them in with my fingers. Now I've got these cute little feet. Now remember, they are super soft clay. If I set this down right now, it wouldn't be able to support itself. So while I finish doing the holes, which I have to clean the tool out, when I finish doing the holes, I'm going to keep the feet facing upwards. And after I finish the holes and I sign it and I let it dry, I'm gonna let it dry on the lip of the pot and only flip it over when I know that they're dry. It's really important to do feet on a berry bowl because if you don't do a foot on a berry bowl and you have holes in it, you put the berries in, you drain it, it sits there on the counter, sits there soaking in a pool of its own water. So if your object is to make functional pottery, make sure that it's functioning. Use the things that you make at home so you know where their good qualities are and where you need to fix some problems. And as for why make functional pottery, well, one thing in our life at least should be functional. Why not the pottery? All right, thanks y'all. I hope you have a great day. Bye now.